Is this on? Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Yvonne Miro. My pronouns are she and her. And um, I will be one of your service leaders this morning, along with the rest of the membership team. Uh, Lauren Pendleton, Maida Zedereko, and Rosemary. That's us. Um, let's see. We do hope that you feel welcome here. The Unitarian Church is a liberal, religious, multi-generational community, I think. And we celebrate a rich mosaic of free thinking, spiritual questing individuals who are joined in common support and action. We welcome diversity, pursue the common good, and work for justice. We believe in the compassion of the individual heart, the warmth of community, and the search for meaning in our lives. Let us take a moment to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 land, the ancestral territory of the Cree, Dene, Blackfoot, Salto, Nakoda, Sioux, and Métis people. We thank the Indigenous knowledge keepers of this area for teaching their people how to live sustainably on the land and in harmony with it. With respect for all of creation, we acknowledge that during colonial rule, this opportunity was taken away from the Indigenous peoples, and now they call out to us all to respond in acts of reconciliation, to listen to their voice of knowledge and how to live in harmony with respect to the earth. And so as we begin this special hour together, I invite you to quiet your devices and yourselves so that we can enjoy the service further. May we be reminded here of our highest aspirations and inspired to bring our gifts of love and service to the altar of humanity. May we know once again that we're not isolated beings, but are connected in mystery and miracle to the universe, to this community and to each other. We'll begin with a time of contemplation and music with this prelude by Karen Mills.
I forgot announcements. I'll call Rosemary up to begin. And just stay there, Karen, because I'm going to ask you after the announcements to play that again once more. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, yes. Good morning. My name is Reverend Rosemary Morrison. It is my pleasure and honor to serve this congregation, this Unitarian Church of Edmonton. Welcome to all of you here and to all of you online. I want to talk about cake. Everybody. <laughs> So please stay after church to have some cake. The membership team will be in the lobby after the service to answer any questions you have about membership and to serve you some wonderful cake that I picked up this morning. We need all of you to take a piece of cake. And I do have some gluten-free options for you as well. There are several announcements this morning, so I'm going to ask you to keep them really brief. And after they're finished, um, Karen will go through that song once more. It is a new song that we're going to be singing this morning. So listen carefully for the melody because you're going to be singing it later. Susan? I'm Susan Rattan. My uh, things are she and her. I remember. I just want to remind everybody this coming Friday night on the 20th here uh, in the church at seven o'clock, there is going to be a celebration of the coming of autumn led by two Indigenous elders. Their names are Terry Alec and Christine Turen. And part of that as well, there will be a drumming circle. So anyone who has a drum should bring their drum. But if you don't have a drum like me, come anyways. I think it's going to be really great. It starts at 7 o'clock. My name is Pauline Atwood, um, she, her. I'm here to announce that Soul Matters is going to be restarting uh, at the end of September. And so there's a sign-up sheet at the back of the hall, and I'll be there uh, in the foyer, and I'll be there for any questions that people might have. This will be our third year of Soul Matters. Soul Matters is an opportunity to um, just delve a little bit further into the theme of the month. Uh, I'll be in the back, so thank you. Good morning, my name is Karen Mills. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm part of the governance advisory team. Uh, Immediately following the services on the next two Sundays, so the 22nd and the 29th, we're going to have workshops to invite your feedback and input on three new policies that we're developing. And this is just a continuation of the work that we've been doing um, that started with the covenant of right relations and making sure that we all have a good foundation and clear expectations of how we want to be together as a community. So there is the announcement that's come out in the Friday newsletter. It's also in the monthly newsletter. The policies are already posted on the website if you want to have a look at them. Not required, but it might give you a little insight before the conversation. And again, that will happen right after the services next Sunday and the Sunday after. We'll do two of uh, two of the policies on the first Sunday and the third one on the next Sunday and there'll be some snacks so we don't have to think about policy and be hangry at the same time. <laughs> Hello, my name is Marilyn Gay. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I've been asked to speak about Child Haven today. Um, you've heard announcements every week that the Child Haven Luncheon Fundraiser is going to be on October 6th. What you may not realize is that today is the last day when you can buy a $50 ticket for this luncheon. It's going to be gourmet Indian food, starting with samosas for appetizers and uh, a full course meal. 
Also, it's a fundraiser with uh, silent auction and other items for sale with speakers. I think Robin Cappuccino, the son of the founders, Bonnie and Fred Cappuccino, will be coming from Ottawa in order to uh, present a program. Child Haven is such a wonderful place. I have a personal experience there. I lived there for a couple of weeks as an intern. They asked me to wear traditional clothes, not my usual t-shirt and jeans. And the children there are raised in their own culture, their own religion, their own language, their own diet. And the objective is for them not to be adopted like some of the other orphanage uh, charities, but for them to grow up and to be full participants and contributors to their own community and society. So um, this is very worthwhile. Jan McMillan will be at the back of the church. There she is holding up an envelope with tickets. This is the last day when you can buy a $50 ticket. The price goes up tomorrow. So the new song that we're going to sing this morning is called Draw the Circle Wide. Uh, anybody who has United Church background, it might sound very familiar to you. There are some printed copies on the top of the piano if you want to have a sneak peek at the music as we go along. The important thing to remember is that for those of you who understand music parts, the first beat of every bar is a rest, which means you don't sing, I get a solo. So. Um, the way we often explain it in choir too is it just needs a little attitude so if you think ah, at the start of every bar you'll be good <laughs> Good morning. My name is Maida Zedereko. My pronouns are she, her. Um, just a second. I'd like to call Lauren Pendleton up, please, to light our chalice this morning. The reading this morning is A Place of Belonging and Karen by Kimberly Ann Tomchak Carlson. It is not by chance that you arrived here today. You've been looking for something larger than yourself. Inside of you, there's a yearning, a calling, a hope for more, a desire for a place of belonging and caring. Through your struggles, someone nurtured you into being, instilling a belief in a shared purpose, a common yet precious resource that belongs to all of us when we share. And so you began seeking a beloved community, a people that does not put fences around love, a community that holds its arms open to possibilities of love, a heart home to nourish your whole soul and share your gifts. Welcome home. Welcome to this sacred space. And I'd like to introduce the first hymn, hymn 188, Come, Come, Whoever You Are.
So one of the purposes of this church community is in, to encourage all who gather here to grow more generous in spirit and action. In addition to supporting this community, we, almost, we also make a monthly commitment to the wider community. One half of the unidentified cash that is received is given to the an outside organization. We take an offering that allows us to exercise that all important generosity of spirit, an offering that will support this self-supporting church and its many ministries. For the month of September, we are supporting Broken Arrow. And I'll just get my notes here. Bent Arrow, I'm so sorry, Bent Arrow. Um, for those in the sanctuary, you can use the envelopes found in the inside cover of the hymn book if you wish to receive a tax receipt for your gift. Please indicate on the envelope your contact information so we can send you a tax receipt at year end. Many of our members and friends give monthly or annually through automatic withdrawal from their accounts. For those of you online, we encourage you to visit the charity of the month, oh, the Bent Arrow website, to make a donation. The offering will now be received. So I'll tell you a little bit more about Bent Arrow. So healing the community, that's their mandate. Uh, the tra Bent Arrow Traditional Healing Society has been serving Indigenous children, youth, and families in Edmonton and the area since 1994. Bent Arrow is dedicated to supporting the mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical well-being of Indigenous children, youth, and families in Edmonton and surrounding areas. We, they provide culturally responsive programming that promotes healing, resiliency, and cultural connectedness. They've been guided by the teachings of elders and knowledge keepers, as well as the wisdom of Indigenous communities. The founders strongly believed that keeping culture at the centre of everything they do was crucial and that this important work was best done in partnership. Over time, they've developed a strong partnerships with many and are proud to see that culture plays, continues to play a central role in their practice. They also support many partners in elevating their capacity to serve the local community through an Indigenous lens in a culturally relevant, authentic, and sincere way. Now, what am I supposed to do? Okay. Oh, and so then we'll need the hymn. I will now invite Lauren to come up and read the responsive reading. Good morning. The responsive reading is 442, and I think it's going to be behind me because you don't have a copy in front of you. We bid you welcome. We bid you welcome who come with weary spirit seeking rest. We bid you welcome who come with hope in your heart. We bid you welcome, who are seekers of new faith. We bid you welcome, who enter this hall as a homecoming. Whoever you are, whatever you are, Wherever you are on your journey, we bid you welcome. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren is a member of our membership team. 
And we are really excited to have a new membership team, and um, I'm going to mention it later, so I'll be mentioning it twice. We're still looking for one or two new members of our membership team. We're doing great work and having a lot of fun, and we're really nice. So Karen has played for you twice the song Draw the Circle Wide by Gordon Light. Um, has so I'm hearing people humming it, and uh, so it's fairly familiar. And if you are at choir practice and would choose to, you're welcome to come and stand in front of the mic to help people um, to hear it and sing along with you. Again, there are um, there's music. Um, where did I put mine? Oh, here it is. Okay, so draw the circle wide. Please rise as you are willing and able. And uh, Karen will bring us in. And please come and sing from the heart. It's a fabulous, fabulous song. Awesome. Thank you. Gordon Light is a prolific. Um, my, sorry? Get the. Uh, yes, but I realized that my microphones were higgledy piggledy, so I had to fix that. He's a prolific composer. He's an Anglican priest and uh, also works for the United Church of Canada and a, a lovely man. I had the privilege of meeting him when we both lived in Kamloops many, many years ago. I'd like to invite us into a time of quiet, of reflection and retrospection, retrospection, if you will. Some might call it prayer, might, some might call it meditation, whatever words work for you, I invite you to settle your body, settle your spirit, take some deep, long breaths with me. 
Maybe your mind needs to wander, wander, and wonder about all the things that happened this week. What were some of the high points? What do you wish you might have done a little better? What's something you're really proud of that you did this week, or today, or this month? Know that you are awesome, that you're loved, that you're welcome, that you are wanted. I invite you to allow the chair to hold you, to let the gravity pull you, to let your muscles relax. Start Close In by David White. Start close in, don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing, close in. The step you might not want to take. Start with the ground you know, the pale ground beneath your feet, your own way of starting the conversation. Start with your own question. Give up on other people's questions. Don't let them smother something simple. To find another's voice, follow your own voice. Wait until that voice becomes a private ear listening to another. Start right now. Take a step you can call your own. Don't follow someone else's heroics. Be humble and focused. Start close in. Don't mistake that other for your own. And just a moment of silence. Start close in. Don't take the second step or the third. Start with the first thing, close in, the step you don't want to take. Start with the ground that you know, the pale ground beneath your feet, your own way of starting the conversation. Start with your own question. Give up on other people's questions. Don't let them smother something simple. To find another's voice, follow your own voice and wait until that voice becomes a private ear listening to another. Start right now. Take a small step you can call your own. Don't follow someone else's heroics. Be humble and focused. Start close in. Don't mistake that other one for your own. Let us sit quietly and contemplate those simple yet complicated words by David White. We'll enjoy some silence together, and when you are ready, I invite you to light candles of joy and concern No, go ahead. Each week, we celebrate our lives together. We acknowledge that we have joys, we have concerns, we have celebrations, we have all manner of things going on in our lives, and these candles are a physical manifestation of our humanity. The tables are open. 
I invite you as you are ready. And I would like to invite Yvonne to light a last candle representing all of us, all of our thoughts, all of our wishes, all of our dreams. Take a look at these candelabras. Aren't they beautiful? They represent us our complexity, our foibles, our warts and all. And we love, we love each other, warts and all. I love that expression because it tells us how important it is for us to recognize that we are not perfect, but we are lovable and we are loved. Amen. We're going to sing a cute, not cute, that's the wrong word, a short and lovely little hymn through twice, Be Ours a Religion, and you can stay seated for this little song, Be Ours a Religion, hymn 1058 in the Teal Hymn Book, if you're following along in that way.
One day when I was in seminary, feels like a long time ago, but it wasn't all that long ago, I attended the Unitarian Universalist Minister's Gathering. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, the Unitarian Universalist Minister's Gathering at the Vancouver Unitarian Church. One day, in one of these gatherings, one of the minister asked this question. What would a theology of supporting families in our congregations be? And I'm like, my head kind of spun around a few times, and I said in my head only because as a seminary student, my mouth was closed and my ears were open. My thought was, wait, but I, wait, just wait a minute. You can't make up theologies. That's not possible. Is it? And before my thought was complete, there they were making up a theology. Now, if you look up the word theology, the dictionary is pretty clear that theology means ideas about God. Merriam-Webster says the re study of religious practice faith and experience. That's what theology is, especially the study of God and of God's relation to the world. Or a theological theory or system. We as Unitarian Universalists think about God in, in a myriad of ways. I don't think any one of us thinks the same way about God. I don't think anybody actually does, but at least we're willing to admit it. <laughs> So, and I, I do consider myself to be more of an agnost agnostic, but I digress. When I was thinking about membership and what membership could mean, uh, the reasons people join a congregation like ours, I asked myself the question. Yeah, you guessed it. What is the theology of membership? What could we make up? We actually get to make up theology we're we're allowed it's amazing it's like whoa and as a theologian i'm very excited about that <laughs> another way of asking is what is the importance of membership how does it improve the world we live in and our relationship with it and within it and here's a little bit of where i got to uh, we belong to a congregation or a society or a club or a gym or whatever to do things together with people that enjoy doing the same kind of things that we do. That's pretty simple, pretty basic. Um, and when we're with these people, let's use UCE as an example for the obvious reasons, we know that we are in a safer space, that we might be even in a brave space that we can perhaps open up a little and relax because we are not going to be judged here quite as harshly as we might get judged in other settings. When we join or attend a Sunday service or other activity here, we are perhaps freer to think and feel deeply about things, to delve into a conversation and actually speak our mind and not worry too much to our, allow ourselves to be in relationship at a deeper level with ourselves and the other folks in attendance and to think and to, I wanna think, get you to think about this kind of on a deep level, like we can open ourselves up, let some of our guard down and be in true relationship with ourselves, with one another, with the community, with the earth, with, our causes and all of those things. Even more importantly, we begin to realize that it matters to everyone else whether or not we, I, you, are in attendance on a Sunday morning or another church activity. Our presence is important to other people. Your presence, you coming to church isn't just for you, you know. It's for the other people, because without you, the experience isn't as rich for everyone else that is here. So it enhances our relationships, membership does with others, ourselves, and whatever it is that might be just a little bit bigger than ourselves. 
Being a member and being in covenant with the other members of UCE means that we have opportunity after opportunity to improve ourselves, learn new skills, especially the skill of being respectful when we might not want to be when we're upset with someone. And we begin to realize that we have to address upset with the person we are upset with. A difficult and important skill to learn. But as we begin to learn how to be in covenant, in community, in membership with one another, such an important skill. The bottom line is that we decide to learn this because we are in covenant with one another. I said that twice, sorry. We are lucky to have each other. Here we can find friends. Have something to do once or twice a week. Be with people of different ages and stages and walks of life. And of course, the most important one, according to myself, and maybe Gordon and Karen, the music directors, we get to sing together. We get to use our whole body on Sunday mornings. Where else do you get to do that? We could go deeper with these points, but perhaps that gives you a bit of a different take on membership. I spoke a little bit about covenant, or a lot. This is the first new member ceremony that has taken place since we adopted our covenant of right relations. Later this month, this covenant is going to be expanded as we only have the first parts in place right now. And you probably are going, you might be, not probably, but you might be. Oh, Reverend Rosemary, why all this talk about covenant? I'm getting a little tired of hearing about it, just so you know. Well, the short answer is this. Unitarian Universalism is not a creedal faith. We don't tell you what to believe. It is a covenantal faith. There are rules about how to be together and how to treat one another. So we're not going to tell you what to believe, but we sure expect a lot from each other when it comes to how we treat one another. Our covenant states, with love as our guide, we pledge to create a beloved community of peace and compassion. We trust our ability to work through conflict. And as members and friends we, of UCE, we agree to be, I'm just going to read a couple, truthful, kind, open-minded, assume good intent and goodwill, listen with open hearts, talk to not about others, accept responsibility for our individual acts, address conflict promptly, be steadfast in support of our community in times of disagreement, share the ministry of this congregation, and express encouragement and appreciation for all of our gifts. What this means is that members of UCE, we are bound by this covenant and each member new and old in a different kind of relationship with one another. We've not had a covenant before or for many, many decades. I'm not sure which. Our covenant asks us to treat each other fairly and kindly, to be healthy in our dealing with one another, to decide to give up talking behind people's backs and to help create safer space together. It can only be if we take covenant to heart that this can be a safer and brave space. The new members we are recognizing today are fully aware that we are in a new kind of relationship with one another and have come forward to be acknowledged. We have had 14 people join since the COVID pandemic started, and we're going to honor two of them this morning. I'm going to turn things over to Mado, sorry, working really hard at saying her last name correctly, and I messed up on her first name, which is not hard, but her last name is a little bit. I'm going to turn things over to Maida Zedereko, the membership team lead, to say a few words. Well, <clears throat> thank you all for being here this morning as we recognize Is and... Hear you? Oh, sorry. I'll just bring this down a little bit. Sure. Thanks. 
You don't have to lean into it, but I think that should pick you up now. Okay, thanks. Uh, welcome. Ah, there's better. <laughs> Thank you for being here this morning as we take some time out of our uh, service to recognize and acknowledge and welcome uh, some new members, uh, myself being one of them and Clinton being the other. Um, is this where I do the bio? No. Yeah. Oh, oh, it is. Okay. Well, then I need more notes. Okay. So, so excuse me a second. <clears throat> So Clinton Outerkirk is the other member joining this morning and um, he would like us to know he was born in Edmonton. He grew up in Grand Prairie and he's an avid Star Trek fan. Uh, he's been working for Save On Foods for 28 years and counting and he started dating Maria in 2014 and they're getting married next month. Hey! Yeah. Uh, he's been attending UCE with her over the last uh, few years, and he's joining, joining just felt right to him. So he's a proud cat dad to a uh, spoiled kitty. <laughs> and, um, and so welcome, Clinton. Um, my bio, my name's Maida Zareko. I was born in the Eastern United States and grew up over most of Western North America. Um, I'm married to my husband, Greg, for 43 years. We have three children and four grandchildren. Yay! Uh, <laughs> so I worked for the city of Edmonton for more than 20 years and um, now retired. And uh, as most people say, too busy, um, busier than I was when I was working, if that was possible. As a young adult, I was baptized into the United Church. Uh, as I became the person I am today, I found the United Church was a little bit too restrictive. It was not broad and inclusive enough. I think I was a born a Unitarian with a small U, and I've always thought that there was one spirit or energy that flows within us all. As I learned about, more about the Unitarian with a capital U, faith, I began to seek a spiritual home, and I found UCE. I'd like to thank you all. Um, I have always felt at home here. I'm looking forward to sharing the spiritual journey with you all. Thank you. And now Yvonne has a few words about what membership means. I think I forgot to say at the beginning that Maida is the chair of our membership team. What does membership mean? Well, membership in UCE likely means many things to different people, but it has at its core a sense of belonging, where we see a piece of ourselves in each other, and we feel a sense of genuine caring and connectedness, even a shared purpose. Membership is also reciprocal. I belong here, yes, but here also belongs to me. Membership carries an intentional mutuality. When we sign on to become members, we are committing to the well-being of the church as a whole. We recognize our mutual, our mutual dependence. We have a covenant among us that includes shared ministry and support. For myself, belonging to any community creates both opportunity and responsibility. I invest by getting involved, and I always find that the rewards are better and often more surprising than I anticipated. My gateway into UCE was through the music ministry, Coriolis. Soon, I felt like I'd found my people, and I was curious about becoming more involved and more known here. I tried helping with various small tasks behind the scenes, meeting more people and discovering what I liked or didn't like doing, and 
eventually I found myself on the, the church board where I learned so much about the running of the church. It's building finances, governance, and it's mysteries. For instance, I discovered that every year there is a fee paid because I am a member. So it's paid on my behalf to our governing organization. Before long, I found my voice and began to express my ideas and I've never shut up since. <laughs> and soon my sense of leadership emerged as I began to take a real ownership in UCE. It created a real sense of purpose for me. And I take our triumphs and our struggles personally, quite personally, since then. I have participated in many roles here, large, small, formal, informal, but all of them important. Because UCE is a spiritual community, the opportunities to grow um, personally can challenge us at a deeper level with deeper rewards, and the investment can be very personal. Essentially, UCE is about how we want others and ourselves to be treated with deep respect and dignity and appreciation, working together to create the kind of church we need today. Your experience as a member of this community will be as valuable as you make it. We welcome your gifts and talents, but most of all, we welcome you into our beloved community. I'd like to call up Clinton and Maida, please, to come and join me down over here. Or we're just right here. I think this would be good. Is that okay, camera people? Be, I think we got a thumbs up up there. No, yeah, no, just face the congregation. It is a joy to welcome you both as members into our community. Becoming a member of this congregation is an important step, and it is only a step. I encourage you to grow your spiritual life with us as well as to explore and share your unique gifts. You are also asked to live in covenant with each and every member and friend of UCE and with UCE itself. I ask you now, will you journey together with us, sharing the joys and the responsibilities of membership? And if you agree, please say, yes, I do. Excellent. And to the congregation, please rise. Members of, I'll stand up on here so you can see me. Members of UCE, will you reach out to these people in friendship, including them in our activities and in our fellowship? Will you walk with them on their spiritual journey? Will you be open to their unique gifts and perspectives? Will you make room for them? Will you extend a warm welcome to each of them, remembering that each of you, too, was once a new member? And if you agree, please say, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Awesome. Thank you, congregation. You may be seated. We are made stronger with each new member, each gift, with each conversation, and with each relationship. Ours is a shared ministry to help each other find meaning in life and to build a just and compassionate life and world, working to fulfill the covenant and mission of this congregation. I'd like to extend some gifts to you. Please accept them. And these are from myself and the membership team. And you are free to come and pick a rose to take home of your choice. Yvonne, would you like to come down and join me? And Clinton? Can I have yours? 
actually we'll be uh, putting them out in the foyer and we are inviting folks to take, take a rose home with you as you wish. I'd like to extend my hand of fellowship and welcome. I would like to extend my hand of fellowship and welcome. And now you have to accept your, extend your hand to him too. <laughs> so it has been such a joy and a pleasure to work with this membership team. We're just getting going on some things and some initiatives and we're really excited about some of the things that are happening here at UCE. Could you please give our new members a round of applause? I would like to ask you to uh, once I would like to note once again that we the membership team will be serving cake after this so we invite you to get another cup of coffee or tea or a glass of water whatever it is you like and and share cake with us and we will be in the back in the foyer lots of people in the back have you noticed there's a lot going on um, that we were we will be here to um, answer any questions you have about membership and um, if you'd like to join us I bet there's a couple of people that would like to join this exciting um, venture that we've got going on um, we, I'd also like to note that in November we're going to be having another new member ceremony and we're hoping to include the congregation a little bit more fully in that one so the last thing I'd like to mention is somewhere I had my name tag. Oh, oh it fell. So we are go starting an initiative to ask people to start wearing their name tags. And one of our team members said, I wonder if we can think of the act of putting on our name tag as a commitment to being present in this time and in this space. May we also think about wearing a name tag as a way to letting ourselves be known and seen. And we'd also really like to give a shout out to those of you that regularly wear your name tags. You are our heroes, so creating um, a new system for name tags is uh, kind of next on our agenda, so please stay tuned for that. Okay, let's take a breath together. Get your tummies ready for cake. And please get your voices ready to sing our final hymn, When Our Heart Is In A Holy Place. Kind of. Um, one of our members said something like after this seems to be like getting to be our our theme song and and i kind of like that maybe it is our new theme song okay please rise in body or in spirit and sing our final hymn 1008 when our heart is in a holy place
I'd like to invite Lauren uh, up to extinguish our chalice, please. In this religious community, oh, sorry, uh, Chalice Extinguishing Words by Thomas Rhodes. In this religious community, we reach back into the past to honour those who came before us and those who have given much so that we may be here today. And we reach forward with hands of welcome to embrace those who have newly joined our fellowship. Wherever your path may take you, may you carry the the good news that you have heard here today with you in your heart and on your lips as a blessing to everyone you meet. Go in peace. I haven't said benediction in a long time. I was like, hmm, okay, I think I got it. I think it's still up there. Do not be dismayed by the brokenness of the world. Things can break, and they can be mended, but not with time, as they say, with intention. So go and love intentionally, and love extravagantly, and love unconditionally, for the broken world waits in darkness, for the light that is within you. Go in peace, gentle people, go in peace, amen. And as is our custom, we will sing our linking song, Carry the Flame, the words are already there. Thank you. I'd like to do a shout out though. I'm sorry, as you get yourself organized, I would like to thank everyone who participated this morning. Thank you. Come on down. Membership.